In this video, we'll discuss finding volume by cylindrical shells. So when is this useful? Well, suppose we have a curve like f of x here, and we're rotating about the y-axis. So essentially, we want to find the solid generated around the y-axis, but there's this hollow space that would happen when we find, let's say, this outer circle, or this inner circle. In fact, if we take a look at inner and outer circle, how do we break these up into functions that we can get values for? Well, when it's tough, we can just take cylindrical shells instead, meaning we can take the height at some point of our curve, and then we can make a cylindrical shell that goes all the way around, and we can just take the volume of that infinitely thin slice. And we can do this for every single point, and then, eventually, we will have the total volume generated. So I have a formula on the right, and the volume for any cylinder is the circumference times the height times the thickness. So if we just take a look at a cylinder and we unwrap it, we end up with, of course, this lovely box looking thing. And it has a circumference, which is essentially the length of 2 pi r, and that's because we take a circle and we stretch it out. We have a height that is usually the curve itself, so let's say the height is f of x, but we'll call this h, and then we have the thickness, which of course, depending on how thick our slice is, it could be big, it could be small. And when we do calculus and integration, usually we do these infinitely small slices, so this is like saying dr essentially. It's a very small change, so usually this is negligible. So we just take a bunch of slices of the circumference times the height. Let's see this in action. But first, of course, the formal definition. The volume of a solid S obtained by rotating about the y-axis bounded by y equals f of x, y equals 0, x equals a, and x equals b, where b is greater than a, is going to be the integral from a to b of 2 pi x f of x dx. And again, 2 pi x is just going to be the circumference f of x is our height, and dx is going to be our infinitely thin slices. So let's do an example here. y equals x cubed, y equals 0, x equals 1, x equals 2, about the y-axis. So uh, let's draw this. Of course, drawing is the most important part, and I really emphasize that all the time because it is so true. So we're looking between x equals 1 and x equals 2, we're rotating about the y-axis, and we have x cubed. So let's just graph x cubes in this part. So if we have x equals 1 and x cubed, we'll end up at 1. Let's call this 1, and if we take 2 and we put it into x cubed, so 2 cubed is 8. Let's put it all the way up here. So here we go. We're looking at this area here, and we're rotating about the y-axis. Of course, we can see right away it's easier to do shells here, because what's happening if we use the disk method? Well, if we use the disk method, we're getting a different circle for this area, and then we're getting a different circle for this area, because we have x equals 1 up to this point here, but then the curve picks up after 1, all the way to 8, and it'd just be kind of a mess. We'd also have to integrate around the y-axis and change our formulas and, well, the shell method is just going to be faster here. So what is this going to look like? In fact, let's just get rid of some of the space here so we can draw one cylindrical shell. So we have a height. And what is our height? Well, our height here is just going to be x cubed, since that's the distance from the x-axis to y equals x cubed, or the curve. So our height, usually in these simple cases, will just be f of x, which of course is y equals f of x, so this will be x cubed. And if we draw our cylinder here, well, what is the circumference? So the circumference is going to be, well, 2 pi times the radius. Well, what's the radius here? It's just x. So it's just the distance from the y-axis to where we're integrating. So 2 pi x, nothing fancy there. 
And of course, then our thinness is just going to be dx because they're infinitely thin. So where are we integrating? Well, we're integrating between x equals one and x equals two. So this will be the integral from, sorry, from one to two. And then it'll be our height times our circumference times our width. So it'll just be two pi x times x cubed times dx. Okay, now we can take the integral here. So we can simplify some things. First of all, we can pull out the two pi and we can take the integral from one to two of x to the four dx. Let's take the antiderivative of that. That's going to be two pi. And the antiderivative of x to the four is going to be x to the five over five from two to one. So if we plug in some values, this will be two pi. Well, two to the five is 32 fifths minus one fifths. So that'll be two pi times 31 fifths, which is just going to be 62 pi over five. Okay, so hopefully in that example, you were able to see how the shells worked and the height and the circumference. Let's do one more example of this, except let's rotate about the x-axis. So let's draw the curve first and then we'll figure out maybe why this is a good idea to do it this way with shells. So we have x equals zero, y equals two. So essentially we're going to stop at this top line here. We have the root of x. So x equals zero, y equals zero, x equals one, y equals one. And if we're bound by y equals two, we'll have to go all the way up to x equals four to get a curve that looks like this. Okay, let's extend our x-axis a little bit. And we're looking between x equals zero, y equals two, and root x. So essentially, we're looking for this area right here and rotating about the x-axis. So disks, could we do disks here? In fact, I think we could do disks here and it might be kind of nice to do disks because then we don't have to change our labels. So of course we could do like the inner disk and then subtract it from the outer disk and we get something nice. But for the sake of demonstration, let's use shells. So in this case, our height and our circumference are a little bit different. So if I draw our height here and I draw what the overall shell is going to look like. Okay, so what is the height? Well, the height this time is not just going to be f of x because, of course, f of x is the height from x to the top of the curve. Instead, our height now is going to be f of y. It's a function of something starting from the y equals zero, or sorry, x equals zero, all the way to the right for x equals whatever the curve is. So our height is now equal to f of y, and what's f of y? Well, if y equals the square root of x, then f of y is essentially like saying that x is equal to y squared. So f of y is going to be y squared. And what about our circumference? So our circumference now, instead of two pi x, it's going to be two pi y. And of course we can just kind of see this visually here that if we take the whole diameter here, it is the equal distance from the y axis in both directions. So here we get two pi y. And of course our thickness is just going to be delta y, well, dy. So let's take the area here. So what are we integrating? Well, we're integrating between zero and two because we have this y-axis here. So again, if I do this in white, this is the distance we're integrating. And it'll be our height times our circumference times our thickness. So it'll be two pi y times y squared times dy. Again, we can simplify a bit. We can pull out two pi. This will be the integral from zero to two of y cubed dy. So if we take the antiderivative, we're gonna get two pi 
times, well, the antiderivative of y cubed is going to be y to the 4 over 4 from 0 to 2. And this will just be equal to 2 pi times 4, which is equal to 8 pi. So that's rotating about the x-axis. Just like when we did disks and we shifted to rotating about the y-axis, we had to change all of our functions in terms of the other variable. We do the same thing here. Because essentially we want our heights to be from an axis and our circumferences to be from the opposite axis. So let's do one more with hollow centers. Let's rotate about the x equals negative 1 with the curve y equals root x, y equals 0, x equals 1. So this looks kind of similar to the one we did just before this. But here we have x equals negative 1. So rotate about this axis. And we have y equals root x, and we're bounding it by x equals 1. So it'll look something like this. In fact, let's make this kind of big. Well, here we have 1. Okay, and this is between y equals 0, x equals 1. So essentially, our shells are going to look like this. And when we rotate them, they'll come out over to this side. But we'll also have this hollow center where everything in this zone will have to be subtracted from our total volume. So again, we run into the same problem we did before, as in, what is our new radius? What are our new heights? So let's take a look at this very carefully. So if I get rid of this point here and make these lines a little bit more clear, then we can ask ourselves, first of all, what is the height? Well, the height, again, is just going to be f of y, because, of course, we're starting or sorry, it'll be f of x, because we're starting from the x-axis. So our height will be f of x, which is just going to be equal to root x. So our height is fine. But first question, what's our radius? Again, let's think of radius first before we go into circumference. So the radius, well, we have a distance of 1 to the y-axis. And then the radius, we also have a, another function here. But what is the distance from the x-axis to our curve? Well, it's just x. So in order to get the whole distance, we have a radius of 1 plus x, because we have 1 from x equals negative 1 to x equals 0, and then we have x from the y-axis to our curve. So to get the circumference, of course, our circumference is just 2 pi times the radius, and our radius is going to be 1 plus x. So if we put this all together, how far are we integrating? Well, we're integrating between 0 and 1, because that's as high as our curve goes. So this will be the integral from 0 to 1 of our circumference, 2 pi 1 plus x, times our height, which is just root x, which I'm going to abbreviate as x to the 1 half, times dx, Okay, so we can pull out 2 pi and take the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 plus x times x to the 1 half. I'm just going to distribute this already. So we're going to have x to the half plus x to the 3 halves dx. And now when we take the antiderivative, this will be 2 pi times, well, we'll have 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus 2 fifths x to the 5 halves from 0 to 1. And if we plug in some numbers here, we're going to get 2 pi of 2 thirds plus 2 fifths. And then when we simplify this, it will just turn into 32 pi over 15. So hopefully now you've seen all the types of different problems you can get with volumes with cylindrical shells. If you'd like some more problems, specifically hollow centers rotating about the y-axis, or sorry, rotating about the x-axis, or say y equals negative 2, negative 3, something like that, then let me know in the comments. Um, if not, be sure to leave a like if this video helped.